sales equaling your debt. Depending on your margins, it can pretty much put your lights out. Um, so uh, Japan really it looks uh, horrific. Uh, here's um, uh, here's the United States. Let's see if I've got this right. Yeah, Japan and the U.S. We've had a steady growth, and we're at approximately 100 percent here. But this doesn't include municipal and state debt, uh, and there's some very disturbing articles about those. So our debt isn't really 14 trillion or 15 trillion. You've got to add muni and state debt, so it's closer to 20 trillion. Then you got to look at indebtedness of the average American versus these other countries' populations. Uh, okay, so that's one metric: debt. Debt is a tax on our ability to. Uh, pay for things, to invest in things, to have capital, to expand. Um, so, uh, you know, the other huge problem we have is with the health care uh, system. So, uh, getting back to the bottom line, <clears throat> we're in heavy debt. Our manufacturing sector, a lot of it has gone overseas. Uh, we don't have a good industrial policy compared to some countries in research and development. Uh, China is going to be overtaking us in patents uh, annually if they haven't already. Germany has managed to maintain a pretty good uh, manufacturing sector um, by having a strong industrial policy, Switzerland. So uh, we also have um, a fairly unhealthy population. Uh, which leads, believe it or not, you know, to very high health care uh, expenditures um, in terms of heart disease, obesity, and so forth relative to industrialized democracies. And let's take a quick look at education. Here is a, a map of um, education um, and mean years of schooling, for example. And um, let's see, where is United States in here? Let's find us. Uh, we're at number uh, 24. So there's 23 countries ahead of us uh, in mean years of schooling, including, rather ironically, Cuba and uh, Libya. Where is Libya? Um, Australia, New Zealand, Iceland, Ireland uh, are at the top. Finland is very high. And Finland and New Zealand uh, do very well. And Korea in... Um, uh, in uh, uh, their standardized testing. So let's look at some testing scores. So the U.S. here is bottom in math, 23rd in science, and 17th in reading. Um, so we also uh, are having problems with our education system. Another interesting factor is that K-12 education is $536 billion a year, and actually just outright Payments on debt is equal to that. Basically, if you look at the federal uh, debt, a lot of it is driven by the war on terror. Um, now, if we look at issue of prisoners in the world, um, if you'll see here, I'll make this a bit smaller. Um, the U.S. has two million prisoners. Um, we have more prisoners than any other country in the world, even though our population is much smaller than China or India's. Um, uh, so this is a big tax on our economy. Uh, and so you know, poverty, lack of education, poor health, uh, these are all factors that can end up creating a higher uh, criminal class. So we have, a, a, I think, a real problem here. And where's the money? Okay, so let's look again. Where is the money? Well, 29% of our uh, public sector is on public health care spending. So how are you going to cut that? 38% is defense and corrections related. And we have uh, incarceration rate about four times any other uh, country uh, when you look at these comparable metrics. Okay, so... Um, Let's go through a few more uh, issues here. So my, my argument is basically that it's Ron Paul's uh, argument, which is to draw to what we do is we cut our defense and corrections spending and we, in, uh, we free that money up. Hopefully it goes into capital formation for businesses uh, and in some way impacts 
uh, poverty, uh, uh, which will lead to people having more money so they can pay more uh, taxes or pay for private education. They see a rise in education, rise in industrial competitiveness, rise in GDP, rise in economic productivity. And then perhaps once we have a much better parity economically, we could look at regrowing the military. But our military, combined with our allies, uh, Japan, South Korea, France, Britain, Germany, is the vast majority of the entire world's military. So who, what is the threat we're concerned about? Um, the real threat is economic decline due to very high levels of indebtedness. So uh, let's see here. The U.S. is the strongest military in the world today, but we can't perpetuate that if we end up 11th economically in the world. That's for sure. And the question is, how will these other countries treat us after we have tried to maintain a, a nearly illegal level of intervention compared to other countries in international law? The U.S., and especially uh, certain politicians, let's say, don't uh, like international law, don't care about it, and believe we have the right to do whatever we want, wherever we want. Now imagine if Brazil, Russia, India, and China all followed that policy, that they can intervene wherever they want, whenever they want, including right here in our country. Um, now, uh, this issue about Iran obtaining nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons are a 1950s technology. Now, of course, they're a great concern, but uh, there are lots and lots of new emerging technologies between now and 2020 that are going to be really more important because they'll have the ability to uh, stop nuclear attacks, destroy nuclear information systems, literally penetrate right through walls of, of buildings with uh, nano robots, uh, spy systems. Um, so there are uh, what we really are concerned about is our uh, research and development capability and our manufacturing capability. And if China has got most of the uh, chip factories and miniaturization systems, uh, uh, we may find ourselves uh, in a, uh, a problem vis-a-vis -vis countries like China or India as they get more and more manufacturing. This manufacturing will be able to be used for uh, competing with other countries. Um, okay, so the U.S. is weakening in many key economic competitiveness factors. Another problem is that our economy grew in the area called FIRE, finance, insurance, and real estate. These don't actually put any food on the table. Um, they each have their role, but they uh, don't do manufacturing, they don't do agriculture, they don't do education, they don't do health care. They are a, uh, a speculative service on top of real production. We And uh, growth of debt. I think I have some information on debt here that might be useful. Okay, here is debt, government debt, and uh, in relation to the economy, over years, I believe, this is 2010, column B, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think I sorted by 15. Um, and the United States is the 10th most indebted country in the world out of, relative to our total economy, out of 172 countries. So we're not the most in debt country in the world. We are the 10th most in debt country in the world. Um, Portugal, Ireland, Greece, what they call pigs, I believe, um, Italy, uh, they're worse. But look at that. We're just a hair under them. Iceland has lower debt levels forecasted than we do. And Iceland just went through a horrible meltdown where their whole banking system collapsed. France, uh, let's see, United Kingdom, United Kingdom. So uh, what's up with that? Um, and where's the money going to come from? Um, and then our reputation in the world is another question. Can we continue to run drone programs in seven countries? Uh, can we continue to rattle sabers over places like Iran? Uh, and how will this affect our standing with developing nations later on? Okay, to be continued.